Hi, Paula. Hi, Tammy. Welcome to Tuesday with Tammy. Thanks thank for being you. my guest today. Well, thank you for having me. You're welcome. So I have Paula Martino here, and she's does fine art, and we'll get into that. Um, you're close to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, right? That's correct. I'm just off the turnpike in North Huntingdon. That's about 20 miles east of Pittsburgh. Nice. Yeah, I'm, of course, originally from Pennsylvania, but um, on the other side of there. Near Philadelphia. Near, <laughs> near 80 and 81, near, you know, closer to Hazleton and Wilkes-Barre, Scranton area. Yeah, yeah, that's near Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I used to fly into Philly or Scranton. So um, let's tell everybody about your um, website and your Gmail so then they can know where to find you. And I'll present it at the end as well. But P Martino, M-A-R-T-I-N-O, art, A-R-T, at gmail.com. And Paula Martino, art, dot com. <laughs> That's correct. All right. Well, first of all, I, we might as well present and say how um, we met. Um, yeah, I was friends with your brother, Mike. Yep. When I lived in New Mexico, he um, was a chiropractor. And um, yeah, one of those things where you think you're going to have a friend forever whenever he needs energy work, healing, and I need a chiropractor. <laughs> and yep. we can do exchange work. Yeah, yeah, he had, he was a good chiropractor. Yeah, but um, yeah, there was an incident, and long story short, um, he's no longer here, and that's how me and you connect it. Yeah, I can't believe it's going to be what eleven years. Since... Unbelievable, time flies. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I miss him every day. I do. I can still remember um, where I met, you know, at the bookstore, the Barnes and Nobles in, in Albuquerque. And he was reading those, the Harry Potter book, because <laughs> you're two, the, your kids, you know, he yeah. was mentioning that. And, and that's pretty much how we met. He, and he's like, hey, can you watch my stuff for a minute? That's usually what I do. <laughs> yeah, he was really friendly and so many friends. That's what you're saying. He had like all these best friends. Everybody says he is my best friend. That's yeah. true. That's true. He, I couldn't believe he went out there in 1997 and he was only there for 13 years and just, you know, you'd come up like hundreds of people, literally, like were just telling me, you know, how wonderful he was, how much he helped them. Um, he was just an outgoing person. He, he really was. He was just friendly. He was easy to be around. He just, you know, I, I miss him. Well, that probably has a lot to say for yourself as well. You know, if you come from the same home a lot of times, but, um, but we're here to, you know, um, bring about your artwork, which, which is fascinating. Um, and I love getting the daily, what is it? The monthly newsletter. <laughs> um, yeah, I wish I could be more regular with that. Um, I try to send at least one out a month and then I try to do a blog post once a month. And sometimes it's more than one and sometimes it's one. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I wish I could get on a schedule like where I did it this day every week or this day every month, but I, I kind of wait until I feel like I have something to say instead uh -huh. of trying to force something out because when I try to force something, it doesn't, you know, it kind of falls flat and I that's not what I want. I want people to feel excited and maybe learn something new or see something they haven't seen before. So yeah, I, I'm trying. <laughs> what I love the stories, how you're out there for gosh, it sounds like sometimes three hours, sometimes you're out in the snow and sometimes you're hiking with 
I'm not sure if it's a group of people. I forget that story, but going up there in the mountain. Well, the one, yeah, the one painting was, I had to hike down, it's called Braddock's Trail uh, Park. Um, and you, I don't know if you're familiar with General Braddock. He was a uh, general during the French and Indian War. And he, this was probably back in the 1760s. And mm -hmm. George Washington was one of his lieutenants and they camped around my house. They might've camped in my backyard for all I know. And they've named a local park after him. It's called Braddock's Trail Park. So you go there and it's like, it's a hill. It's like a, a real, I don't wanna say steep hill because you guys have steep hills out West and we just kind of have rolling hills, but it's a hill. And I hiked down into the hill where I knew there was a waterfall. And I set up and I did the waterfall. And then I put all the stuff back on my shoulder and I was going up the hill and it just felt so much steeper going up than it did coming down. And I was like sweating and puffing. And I just thought, I'm never gonna do this again. And I never did. That was probably about three or four years ago. And now I try to go places where the, the hike from the car to where I want to paint won't be so um, taxing. <laughs> and it depends on the weather. Like you don't mind getting hot if it's cold, but if it's really hot out, you want to make sure you're going to be able to stand in the shade. Um, last, and then last week when we were out on Thursday, I had to situate my easel so that it was in the shade, but my body was in the sun so that I could stay warm, but the sun wouldn't interfere with the colors I was mixing because mm -hmm. I've noticed that if I try to mix colors in the sun, they come out, um, the painting comes out real dark. It's the sun yeah, makes a huge difference about how my eyes and my brain interpret the colors. Mm -hmm. So I have to be careful and make sure that the mixing surface and the canvas are in the shade. And if it's summertime, I want to be in the shade too. Yeah. So what I'm looking at has to have sun and shade to make an interesting uh, composition. So yeah, I, I, I did hike down there and I never did it again. <laughs> We learn through trial and error sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I was in better shape, but now, and especially now with COVID, you know, I used to belong to the gym and I dropped my membership because I couldn't go anymore. I was afraid of getting sick. So I'm waiting for the gym to reopen. But in the meantime, I haven't gone in almost a year. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm pretty out of shape. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Every now and then I have to just go out and hike myself. I know, right? It's it's you have to make your own. Well, I've been going. I've been going for walks. You know, yeah. I'll go like two or three miles in the cold, and it's pretty cold here. It's thirty degrees, and I got an extra uh, warm coat this year. I went to um, REI, mm -hmm. and I got myself a, a new winter coat, and it's really warm, so I have no excuse. Love that store. Yeah. Yeah. To not, it was, uh, to it was, not go for my walk. It was 50 here today in San Diego and that's considered cold. <laughs> yeah. I was in San Diego years ago, um, right before Christmas. I think it was 1996. I had a friend who lived there and yeah, it was so nice. I mean, mm. you know, you could like the, the shopping malls didn't even have a roof on them, <laughs> which could never happen here because it's always raining or something. We more need umbrellas for the sun. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. When I was out in New Mexico visiting my brother, people did carry umbrellas yeah. for the sun. And you so would never harsh. see that around here either. So I want to ask you about what got you involved with art and, um, you know, the color and all these fun things, this creative outlet. Um, I was always interested in color from the time, from as far back as I can remember. So, um, yeah, that started probably 
before kindergarten and you know I my parents like I, I went to school and we always had art class and then my parents signed me up for an art class at the museum near our house and I did that one winter when I was about 10 and then I studied art in high school and college and when I got out um I don't know if you remember back in 1982, there was a big recession and I was having trouble finding a job. And my dad, who was a CPA said, come and work for me. You can have healthcare and you'll make some money. And so I started doing that and I just kind of stayed doing that. And I did it for 35 years. I went to night school, studied accounting, became a CPA, and along the way I had children and one of my children was born with Down syndrome. So once I had him, I had to cut back my work to part-time. And sometimes I would go to a, a art workshop, you know, painting, um, drawing, and they were always like small local things. Mm -hmm. And then my son, when my son became an adult and I got him into a group home and then my parents got sick and yeah, my dad got sick right after my son moved out. So I was help, trying to help him and my stepmother. And then right after my dad passed away, my mom was diagnosed with dementia so I had to move her to live near me and she was in and out of the hospital like the entire two years that she lived near me. So she passed away in November of 2019. And at that point, um, I guess I had tried to set up my website while I was taking care of her and it got off to a pretty slow start. Um, but I was, you know, I needed something else to do besides visiting her all the time and going to the hospital. So I did that. And then I was still entering jury shows. Um, you know, I won an award in the, at the museum in Ligonier. That's a museum near where I live. And then I was juried into the Pittsburgh Society of Artists. Um, and that'll be two years. So yeah, it's been about two years since I really tried, you know, like put forth effort and been trying to do something with this. Mm. So, and then the, yes, you know, right after my mom passed away, the pandemic hit. So all <laughs> of our thing? shows for 2020 were canceled. Um, they all went virtual. So any shows that I did get in weren't live shows. They were all online and I don't know how much people go online to view art. I know they go online to buy art. I don't know if they go um, to virtual exhibitions. So yeah, we're like the Pittsburgh Society is planning two live exhibits this year and I volunteered to be one of the co-chairs for the exhib exhibition committee. So I have, a, uh, I have another Zoom meeting at seven o'clock tonight about that. And then they're, we're gonna try to make them live shows like with poetry readings and other things. Like the one is gonna coincide with a um, fall festival in a suburb of Pittsburgh, it's called Coriopolis. And they did a show, actually they did a new member show in October that wasn't really well attended. It was like a Halloween thing, but they only were letting 10 people at a time into the gallery. So I don't know how many people saw it. Um, but yeah, that's what we're trying to plan for 2020. And so now you have a whole history of my art <laughs> from the time I was little until now. Well, that's great, that's great. Um, I have a niece that lives in Pittsburgh or in the surrounding area. I'll have to let her know because I'm sure she loves artwork as well. And she has friends, et cetera, et cetera. It's all fun, you know, to know what's around. She probably knows she could know these things for all I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like the butterfly effect is what I was thinking. You, you really can't change one thing because then it changes everything. And um, 
So, you know, being an accountant and then now your artwork, so maybe it's, it's the perfect alignment. Well, I, you know, I've talked to other people about that. And I think the thing that's made doing artwork easier for me than for someone who didn't have that kind of experience would be, you know, I have a lot of computer experience, you know, um, my, for me to set up my website and get everything organized, um, that probably wasn't that hard for me just because what I did for 35 years had to be so organized with deadlines and, um, you know, certain kinds of software, you know, we had to have, uh, I had to have like special uh, clearances with the IRS, mm -hmm. um, just stuff like that, that mm -hmm. I think a lot of people might not have that kind of experience. So as far as the record keeping and the computer work, that part of it is pretty easy for me. Um, the thing that I had to get used to was going into my studio and sitting there or standing there and deciding what to paint like what's going to motivate me, what, what interests me, um, you know, is it color, is it like line, you know, I have taken, we have a art league locally where I live in North Huntingdon and they want me to teach and I taught one class and then the pandemic started, so that was all put on hold, so that's another thing I'm going to do and I did tell them, like somebody emailed me this morning about like, when do you want to start up with classes again? And I said, I'm going to wait until I get my vaccination because I'm just afraid that, you know, I, I just don't want to do it. I mean, they say that there's distancing and masks and you go to these classes and I drop stuff off where you go in and drop something off and you look around and everybody's mask is under their chin. And <laughs> to me, you know, that's not wearing a mask. I, I can't no. do that. And I don't wanna be rude to anybody or hurt anybody's feelings. So I just said, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna do it until I get vaccinated and, you know, I leave it at that. So yeah, that's, I don't remember the original question. <laughs> <laughs> So your mom was in her 90s. Um, yeah, she lived a long, full life. My mom was really amazing. She was interested in everything, it seemed like. Um, she, yeah, she was an accountant, and she was just really creative with things like um, fashion and home decoration. And she was really particularly interested in fitness and vitamins and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, like I have problems with arthritis now, you know, in my hands. And I feel like if she were here, she would be all over it, you know, like telling me, well, you know, drink this and take this vitamin and do these exercises. And yeah, my brother too. I mean, he, he would have been a big help as well, but they're not here. So I try to muddle through on my own. I was seeing a nurse practitioner and she helped me a lot with, um, you know, those elimination diets where you add one thing at a time, like one food a week to see what bothers mm -hmm. your, mm -hmm. what bothers your body, mm -hmm. like what you might have an intolerance for. So I did that. And that is really hard. Have you ever tried it? Mm -mm. I it's, it's really hard. Um, the only thing I was allowed to eat was organic meat and organic vegetables and herbal tea. Wow. And that was it. And you have to do that for 30 days and you're ready to pull your hair out because it's so boring and it's just everything. I, I don't want to say it tastes bland because it is like, it's good, healthy food, but it's, not what the way we're used to eating. And so, yeah, back in, right around the time that I moved my mom up here, I was having a lot of problems with my hands. And so I was doing this diet and I was visiting her and she was in assisted living, but she kept falling and winding up in the hospital. And I would try to paint and 
it was just a big you know mishmash of everything and so that was when I decided that I would stop preparing taxes because I just didn't have enough time in my life for everything and if I was going to use my hands I wanted to use it for something more creative and I I know people say that accounting can be creative but you know just doing tax returns part-time didn't feel very creative somehow and I miss seeing my clients you know they would come I had an office in my dining room and you know everybody would come to the house and drop stuff off and I'd talk to them and it was a nice visit once a year and I had about I guess I did about 70 returns a year which was a lot to do by myself because I didn't have an assistant or anything mm -hmm. but I gave that up and I decided I'm going to take care of my mom and I'm going to do my artwork and that's all I'm going to do so yeah that's kind of what I've been doing and I I don't know it's hard for me to tell what's going to happen with my hands because it does seem to get a little bit worse every year but I want to use it for painting use my hands for painting for as long as I am able to mm -hmm. yeah I hear that that even happens a lot though well most a lot of times artists you know doing that their whole life um can take a toll on their hands well yeah even if I had been a wow. painter for 35 years rather than working at a computer it probably would have happened anyway. And I remember my art teacher in high school, her arthritis getting really, really bad. And I think she retired the year that I graduated. And I'm pretty sure that was the reason why, because she was just, she was amazing. She used to do wood sculptures with, you know, a hammer and chisel. And she was just really good and extremely talented. And she was a nun. I, I went to Catholic school mm -hmm. and I felt bad about it at the time, but I was 18 and I thought, wow, that's terrible, you know, because you're so young and healthy that, you know, stuff like that doesn't even occur to you. <laughs> and now it's now my reality. And I'm wondering how old she was when that happened. If she was my age or older, I don't know. I mm -hmm. don't even remember her, you know. When you're that young, you don't even think anybody know, over 30 right? seems really old. <laughs> I know a friend of my, me, mine, we were talking about this sort of thing the other day and we're like, nobody ever tells us these things. And, and she says, you know, we probably wouldn't listen anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah. I would have thought, wow, that's so sad. You know, I feel bad for her. And then I, you know, 10 minutes later, I would have probably been thinking about something else. So. <laughs> I know. I also went to um, Catholic school for eight years, actually. So some nuns are nice and then so. <laughs> yeah, it depends on, you know, some are great, you know, and they're like all really, I, I feel like they're all pretty smart, but some are just really nice. And then others seem kind of unhappy. <laughs> and I don't know if it was because they had to teach a bunch of ungrateful teenagers. I, I don't know. Hey, you know, right. Hard to say. That's a whole nother. Exactly. Um, so you have um, experience now with, because your son, the autism, what? He has that? a dual diagnosis. He has Down syndrome and autism. And you know, we, we worked with therapists uh, for many years. Uh, they came to the house. Um, in Pennsylvania, they have something called early intervention. So we had people like probably at least three times a week working with him until he was three. And then after that, he was in a, the county preschool for two years. And then after that, he went to a special school because I could have sent him to the public school um, we had that available to us, but he was nonverbal, and I just really didn't feel like that was the right place for him. Mm -hmm. So he went to, it was, a, again, a Catholic school, and the nuns were really, I mean, they were great with him. You know, he was in a school with about, I'm going to say there were probably about 70 students, and they all either had autism or Down syndrome or 
-hmm. another kind of syndrome, but you know, less common than what he has. Mm -hmm. His Down syndrome is pretty common. And he was there for 16 years and I was their volunteer librarian. So I went every Wednesday to, you know, sort their books and check people out with books. And that was turned out to be like one of my favorite things that I've done in my life. I met all the kids, I knew all the teachers, and I really got to learn a lot about um, the system in Pennsylvania, like how you get uh, funding for things that you want. So I learned a lot that way. And I, I really wanted him to be independent so that when my husband and I are gone, you know, I don't have to hand him off to his sisters, you know, because I want them to have their own lives. I want them to visit him, but I don't want them to feel like he's a burden. And yeah, I know a lot of people don't like group homes, but I felt like that was the best thing for him. And we found a really, really nice agency. It's a small agency. They only have three houses. I know all the caregivers. I have all their phone numbers. They text me pictures of him when he goes on an outing, which he hasn't done this year because of the pandemic. But, you know, I'm allowed to visit him if I wear a mask. And, you know, I'm on a first name basis with all these people. Um, they know my daughters. They know that we can drop into the house at any time of the day or night and they treat him like a king mm -hmm. he is just borderline spoiled because he has all these people kind of catering to him and he's the only person in the house um you know somebody stays overnight with him but he's the only like client mm -hmm. so to speak um they were gonna they thought about bringing in a housemate for him but just because of his behaviors it wasn't going to work out. Um, he would need a, need a certain kind of person to live with. And I don't think, I mean, it was the reason that he got housing in the first place because he was so hard to live with. Um, you know, he used to throw our belongings out the window, um, just a lot of different things. So yeah, when, when I got him into the group home, I felt like yeah, now I can focus on myself again because my daughters are pretty self-sufficient. I had one older than him and one younger than him mm -hmm. and they were great. They helped me with him. And yeah, I, I really feel like they're self-sufficient and they'll take care of him when I'm gone. You know, they'll oversee his care. But yeah, once he was out, that was when I started taking um, figure drawing classes locally. And I found we had one in our town and then she stopped doing that after three years. So now I go to one in Greensburg, which is about a half hour away. And then I go to another one in Regent Square, which is a half hour in the other direction. And one's once a month, one's once a week. And we get you know, different models. Um, sometimes they dress in costumes, sometimes they're undraped. Mm -hmm. uh, it just depends on what the person wants to do. But again, during the pandemic, that's been put on hold. So I can't wait for that startup because I really enjoy that. Um, I, I like figure drawing. Um, next week, we're doing the uh, winter paint out and it's supposed to be pretty cold and pretty snowy. And I'm wondering how we're gonna do it because if you paint in oil, you can't really let the canvas get wet. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work. Um, we're gonna have to, I, I have an umbrella, but I don't know, mm -hmm. you know I, I just don't know. And I was more concerned about it being cold. Now I'm thinking we may, may have to worry about snow as well. It's always a challenge. There's always something, right? Always. Right. That's right. the way it works. <laughs> and you have an amazing husband. How many years have you been married? Um, I got married in 1984. So it'll be 37 years in August. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, he, yeah, he travels. So he's never oh. really here much. And now that 
the pandemic's winding down, he started traveling like by car locally. He used to do a lot of international traveling. Mm -hmm. um, so he was not really here much, which is why I had to rely on my daughters. Yeah. So yeah, he's been on every continent and wow. you know, all these big cities. Yeah, he's been in South Africa and Saudi Arabia and China and wow. Mongolia. Um, you know, Peru. What kind of work does he do? I forget. Um, he is a fire protection engineer and wow. he's mechanical by degree and fire protection by license, and he works for insurance companies. Um he inspects really big factories and mines and um, you know, writes reports and then submits them and they base their insurance premiums on his reports. That's so, incredible though, all over the world like that. Um, but yeah, like you said, now we have to pretty much just drive, try to keep things local. Well, that's just it. Like today he's in Maryland, which is you know, three hours away and he's dry. He did an inspection there this morning and then he's driving somewhere in Pennsylvania, Hanover or something. Mm -hmm. And then he's got a third place to go when he's done there. So he'll be back home on Thursday, I think. Um, yeah, he was up in the Northwest Territories near the, um, what is that, the Arctic Circle. Mm -hmm. He hasn't been to Antarctica and I know he would like to go to Iceland, but not not been there yet and i used to really wish i could go with him but because of my son i wasn't able to and I was as soon ask. as i was able to you know as soon as <laughs> he was gone and my parents were gone the pandemic hit and they set up oh, no more travel and i thought yeah doesn't that just figure <laughs> i know this whole COVID situation wow who knows when it's gonna end? I'm hoping vaccine. you know it'll end over the summer when we all get vaccinated. I I don't know. My son is on the top tier, you know, because he's disabled. He and his house people can get the shots first, you know, after mm -hmm. the nurses and doctors. Nice. And he is on a waiting list. Um, I'm not on a waiting list because you have to be over 65, and I'm not and yeah, yeah I, I'll probably be one of the last people to get a shot but <laughs> that's okay it's okay stay safe right <laughs> right uh, you might be teaching drawing classes online who knows <laughs> well I would like you know and I've tried to get the local art league to do that and they you know you can't even pay for classes on their website which I think is kind of um, you know, I wish they would modernize things a little bit, but nobody's doing that. And I suggested it, you know, to the people in charge because, you know, I'm happy to teach and I would be happy to teach online, but they don't have anything set up to do that. So, and I don't want to go around them and try to set up my own thing because I don't know, I, that I think requires more tech savvy than I have. There's a, it's a lot, it's a lot of work, you know, to, work. <laughs> to set up like the, the camera, like, because you'd have to be looking at my face and looking at my, my drawing, looking at my palette, like whatever, you know, I'd have to have practically somebody standing there, you know, doing it for me. And I don't have anybody here. He's not here. My kids aren't here. So I'm just waiting for them to reopen and then I'll teach in person. But I have been taking um, classes in Zoom rooms. Like I'll set, sign up for like, you know, short workshops, things like that, just to keep up practice. As you're talking about that, it was reminding me of a friend of mine that lives in Illinois and she went online. She's a good artist as well, like yourself, and um, started drawing and the, the amount of people on Reddit, R E D E I T, yeah. the amount of people at the end, I forget how, like there was an overabundance of people at the end watching the whole thing being completed. It's like, wow. And she sold her the painting before it was even um, completed. <laughs> so she did it live on Reddit. Wow. I know, huh? 
Well, she's really brave too. I don't know. I, I mean, some people do those live demos. I've never done one. I'm, well, I take that back. I, I had to do it when I was teaching my class. It was an abstract painting class, but it was abstract. It didn't have to look like something. And I was using like rollers and brushes and it was on a the oversized canvas and it was spread out on a table and they were just all crowded around the table. And I was showing them step-by-step step what to do. But if I had to draw like a portrait or you know paint a landscape in front of a class, I, I think I would have, I would be a little bit nervous. I think, I'm sure she was. I think she just went right through that fear, you know, and just went for it. <laughs> Maybe she took a break in between because you could do what you want, right? It's all. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, that's definitely true. And I think people are way more forgiving. Um, they're more impressed with what you can do than you think they will be. Mm -hmm. So always. there's that too. I know. We're always harder on ourselves, I think, most of us. Right. Oh, I agree. I agree with you <laughs> because I, I'll do something and I'll be looking at it and think, oh, and other people will say, oh, that's wonderful. You know, how much is it? And, you know, stuff sells that I, you know, I think it's okay. I mean, it's okay mm -hmm. to show, but I don't think it's out of the ordinary. And, you know, people are really, uh, you know, they, they give you a lot of good feedback about it. And I was thinking, because you have all these different experiences, my goodness. Um, so, you know, if my listeners have the simplest questions of even advanced dementia or, um, you know, with your son, with the autism yeah. and, and all that, um, you know, maybe shoot you an email. I mean, oh, absolutely, you don't mind. Because I know a lot about Down syndrome. I know a good bit about dementia because my mom and my mother-in-law both had it. My dad had leukemia. Um, yeah, I... I, I spent a lot of years taking care of other people with my dad. You know, my stepmother did the bulk of that, but with my son and my mother, that was, that was all me. Mm -hmm. I know. And we never know what's going to happen. Right. That's why I'm glad well, you're doing this. Well, yeah. And you have to think that, you know, someday it might be me, you know, like, exactly. and I, I would hope that somebody would be, Mm -hmm. kind and patient and you know that's that's what it's about you know just trying to help each other exactly that's what we're here for so was this like a birthday wish come true because you've always wanted to do the art you know do your artwork um so it's kind of like a birthday wish finally come true I would think well it was and I told my husband you know because my younger daughter is still in college she should nice. have been graduating but she changed her major halfway through her second year. So now she's in the school of engineering and same school my brother went to mm. and the one her dad went to. Um, she's got two more years of school. So I had planned to work until she was done. And then the whole business happened with my mom and my hands. And I just went to him and I said, I am ready to lose it. <laughs> I don't think I can work anymore. And, you know, I know I said I would help because with my older daughter, I paid for a lot of her school and he paid, you know, the rest, but still, you know, we had saved some mm -hmm. and I don't want my kids to have a lot of debt. Um, you know, we did kind of promise them that we would pay for it. So we're doing that. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, you're the only person who knows what you're able to do. And if you don't think that you can do it anymore, because I would sit down and my hands were messed up and I was starting to get brain fog. I felt like I was running underwater. I just couldn't do it fast enough. And when you do tax returns, you know, there's that deadline mm -hmm. and I got to say, most of the returns come within a six week window of time. Mm. So if you're doing, say, 50 returns, pretty much, you know, what, like 35, 40 of them are going to come 
in about 30 days. So you're going to be doing like a return every day. And they're not easy returns. They're because if they were, people wouldn't be bringing them to a CPA. So yeah, I said, I, I can't work fast enough. It's, it's not worth it to me to cut back because if I cut back, I'm not making any money and I'm putting myself through this for not very much. So he said, fine, you know, do what you want. And I think he was happy. He built me a studio in the basement. You know, he did like put up track lighting and, nice. um, you know, there's a sink just outside the studio. Um, you know, he comes to all my shows. He's He's been really supportive, even though he doesn't really know very much about art. I, I think he knows that it makes me happy. So, you know, he's, he tries to do his best and come to all the shows. <laughs> That's the main thing. <laughs> right, right. That's great. So do you have a spirit animal or a book you recommend or a saying you like to say? I'm more of a book person and I have a really like a pretty extensive collection of uh, art books. Um, I've, I've done some book reviews on my blog. Um, two of them, like one I did on Kandinsky and he was an abstract painter, a Russian painter um, back, I'm going to say, but his best work was probably like from 1900 to like 1930. And he uh, lived and taught in Russia, like during the revolution and also in Germany. So there's a, there's a book or there's a um, book review on my blog. And then another book that I really liked a lot was, uh, it was called Little. And it was the life story of Madame Tussaud, uh, mm -hmm. the wax museum lady. And that book just absolutely fascinated me. And she would uh, make these uh, plaster casts of people's faces. And it just, it went into great detail about how she did it. And she uh, was orphaned at a young age and she was adopted by a doctor who did uh, medical drawings. Okay. And it's really fascinating. I mean, I don't want to tell too much because mm. I, I just love this book. So I did a pretty extensive review on that book too. And I, I would like to do more in the future because I have so many books. I, I could probably do a book review every month and it would go on for years. That's how many books I have. Right now I'm reading a book uh, that Kandinsky wrote. And he, was, he wrote a lot about color which is what is a primary interest of mine. And that's why I had been asking you about the chakras and the different colors and what they meant. Um, he had, and I, I've only gotten about a third of the way through it, but he was really convinced that the different colors corresponded to certain emotions and even sometimes certain types of music. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm halfway through that and I'm hoping to apply what I learned from that into a new series about, um, this is going to sound weird, but I'm thinking of applying it to paintings of, uh, about chromosomes mm -hmm. because that would kind of tie my knowledge of art and color with my knowledge of my son and his condition. And I really have been searching for something that speaks to me personally. I think I've moved beyond just wanting to paint what I see. Mm -hmm. I want to paint what I see and feel and interpret it in a meaningful way that can really speak to people. Does that make I sense? I love that idea. I think it's great. And um when we were talking the other day, when I mentioned, because you, when you were asking about color and the chakras, and then I remember why I used to teach preschool for a bit in um, New Mexico with Rudolf Steiner work. And um, I looked him up uh, after you mentioned him to me. He does those Waldorf school. <laughs> those, those are really interesting. Yeah. And, and the same philosophy with the spirituality, the chakras, the colors, um, all that stuff. So yeah, it's, it's all kind of aligned and the same with the music and, and the tones and all that. It's all 
together. It's, it's really, you can connected. see where so many different um, areas of life overlap in mm -hmm. ways that you never really thought about. So yeah, I, I'm trying to read as much as I can. You know, I study a lot of videos. There's so much on YouTube. Um, you know, there's so many really talented artists that do, you know, online workshops. So I'm just trying to study as much as I can and, you know, make the best work that I can. And I think it's I, beautiful. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't want to, I'm at the point where I don't want to force it. Like at first I was just, I have to do this now. I haven't been doing it for so long and I want to do it and do it and do it. And then all of a sudden I just kind of stopped and I thought, what am I doing really? You know, I have to like put more thought into it. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. You know, I'm, I'm thinking more about the meaning of what I'm making instead of, you know, like kind of quality versus quantity. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I'll set up a challenge for myself and I'll paint like a series, like a little painting every day for 30 days. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I took a trip to Maine over the summer and again, it was during quarantine, so I couldn't go anywhere, but I was able to go to the beach and just walk along the beach. And I came home and I did a, a series of about 12 paintings of Portland, Maine. And mm. I enjoyed, really enjoyed doing that. So it was after that, that I thought more about, you know, what I wanted to do after that. And I, I think I'm, I've, I'm coming up. I, I did uh, email one of the um, reference people at the University of Pittsburgh Library this morning about my new chromosome project. Uh, I'm hoping to uh, get in touch with a scientist who, who can help me understand more about them because my understanding of that, I think, will inform what I'm able to paint. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like all this information in quality versus quantity and the books you recommend, it's all like, you know, will trigger something just in, like you said, in your own mind and going somewhere like you, Maine, et cetera, just the inspiration. <laughs> it's right. all together. And plus uh, I did go before the pandemic, I had gone on a couple short trips with my husband and these smaller towns that he, they're sending him to now um, cause his company, company went through a merger and like a lot of the stuff is smaller, uh, the companies that he's going to. So some of these little towns have really nice little museums mm -hmm. that you, you know, you don't have to go, you know, to the national gallery, although, you know, I have been to the national gallery and it's wonderful. These little museums, you know, sometimes they have you know, a couple really, really nice paintings. And you know, we went to somewhere in Ohio, I don't remember the city, but um, they had a little wing of the uh, museum was completely devoted to Middle Eastern mm -hmm. ceramics. And it was all um, just like design and like all these blues, mm. blues and golds and the patterns. Mm. It was just absolutely gorgeous. And I thought this is out in no man's land in the middle of Ohio. I can't believe this is so wonderful. And then they had another little wing that was completely devoted to guns, like all kind of antique firearms. So there's a lot out there. It doesn't have to be, you know, some big splash, you know, mm. like the uh, Museum of Modern Art mm. or, you know, the you know, the Art Institute of Chicago. I mean, those places, you have to spend a whole week in their minimum if you want to see everything. But these little museums, you could spend one or two days and they're just really nice. Hidden gems, that's what I like to call them. Right, right, <laughs> it's true. It We're lucky true. enough to find them. Yeah, it's true, they're everywhere really. You've just taken the time. Right, so yeah, I, I like to do that too. And it, again, it gives you ideas because you don't want to copy. You think, wow, that's that's a cool idea. If I use those colors, 
or if I use different colors with a design that might be similar, you know, then you can create something new and you're always building on what somebody else has done. It's like, exactly. it's, you know, no art is completely new. I mean, yeah. using similar materials or, you know, whatever it is you're doing, you know, it's always, yeah. you learn something from someone somewhere. Getting in spot inspiration, just, just seeing a certain color could just bring inspiration there, creativity over here. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So any last words of advice or wise wisdom? Well, I guess I feel like I just never gave up thinking that I could eventually make art. Like even with having my own accounting business so that I could make money, um, raising three children and one was disabled and doing my volunteer work and keeping track of my husband while he flew around the world. I mean, I was so busy for decades and in the back of my mind, this was always, always there. And I kept thinking, I hope it's not too late. I hope by the time I get everything done that I need to do, I hope it's still there and it is. So I would just say, don't give up. Um, you know, I'm 60 years old and I, I'm still able to do this. And I, I feel like I'm in a better place than I would have been say 30, 40 years ago mm -hmm. when I hadn't experienced much of life. Um, you know, there's a lot of like joys and sorrows and all of that goes into what you make. So yeah, I mean, I think you can make better art in many ways. That's what I was thinking. It's all mirroring and it's, it's all a part of you and, oh, you know, you have so much to offer <laughs> and you can see it when you look I at it. I hope her. so. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you for having me. This was oh. really enjoyable. I really enjoyed it. Thank you.